the rationale of practice in the way of divine ignorance. The subjective, astral, mental or psychic dimension of the psychophysical being is the medium between the soul and the body or the field of concrete relations. Therefore, the mind is the repository of tendencies, urges or desires which produce bodily action. In this sense, the subjective aspect of the bodily being is senior to the objective or bodily aspect. However, the mind in itself is nothing more than attention. It becomes tendencies of attention through association, contact, repetition and reaction in relation to experiential phenomena. Thus, the body in its various objective relations is senior to the mind or the interior subjective personality as a source of tendencies. The body-mind, therefore, is not simply controlled by the mind. The body-mind is a dynamic or two-sided mechanism in which both aspects cycle through phases of dependence and dominance in relation to one another. This scheme requires a unique form of intelligence or wisdom to appear, or else there is no self-mastery. The practice in the way of divine ignorance accounts for the dual or dynamic nature of the body-mind, while it is also founded in the radical point of view of the free soul. At every stage of the way, right functional or whole bodily activity is the chosen principle, rather than any or all forms of exclusively subjective or internal and mental self-manipulation. The individual must change his action first, or else the contents of the mind, which are only a reflection of past actions, will not change. In every stage of the way, the devotee is obliged to accept responsibility for a more and more total functional spectrum of action. Coincident with responsibility for the whole body or action, which naturally includes right and responsible exercise of the various mental and psychic faculties, the devotee is also con constantly obliged to bypass all casual indulgence of the mind as random internal urges, desires, thoughts, subtle experiences and so forth. The random content of the mind is not manipulated or suppressed. Rather, the random content of the mind is simply not indulged. Instead, the root of all mental content, which is simple attention, is constantly entered into the disposition of love, communion with the living God. As a result of the two principal aspects of practice, appropriate or responsible whole bodily action and surrender of attention to divine communion, the motivating content of the subjective or internal personality is undermined and it ultimately becomes obsolete. In this manner, the mind or the subjective being, which migrates and causes the soul to experience birth in the realm of change and death, is dissolved in the living God. Therefore, at last, the soul abides in God, and the body or the former association with experience falls away, since the mind is no longer there to demand experience. Practice in every stage of the way of divine ignorance is guided by this understanding. The essential principle is awakened through hearing and seeing the spiritual master in truth. That principle is the disposition of free soul or continuous love communion with the all-pervading radiant and transcendental consciousness that is the God and self of all. In this disposition, the mind or self-possessed gesture of differentiated attention is constantly bypassed, undermined and made obsolete by non-use. Likewise, 
Every moment of divine love communion is enacted whole bodily. That is, it is not merely an internal, subjective or mental psychic gesture. Rather, it is a matter of responsible, whole bodily or psychophysical activity. Therefore, in every moment, whatever action or functional condition is natural and appropriate is openly and freely engaged and it is engaged as a form of conscious love communion with the living God, the condition of all conditions. This is the ultimate principle or logic of spiritual practice in the way of divine ignorance.